It is time to take a closer look at the economy. The Asian Development Bank has been taking part in a variety of development projects in the Asia Pacific region. Marking the week of ADB's annual meeting, our finance correspondent Yi Dae-yeon is here with us to tell us more about one of its interesting projects. Welcome, Lei Hun. Great to be here, Jung Min. So you were in Manila uh, at the ADB headquarters. What did you learn there? Right. I visited ADB's headquarters located in the the Philippines capital Manila prior to the annual meeting and one of the great things was I got a chance to see one of the project sites that ADB is currently financing. I would like to introduce you to a railway project that's going to be a substantial part of the Philippines transport infrastructure. It's going to be the longest railway in the Philippines. The North-South Commuter Railway, comprising three major sections, will stretch about 150 kilometers once completed. What you see behind me is a construction site of the Malolos Clark Railway, one of the most biggest transportation projects that's currently taking place here in the Philippines. The North-South Commuter Railway will link the growth centers of the city of Clark, where the international airport is located, with central Manila and Columba City to the south of the capital. It's expected to offer commuters speedy public transport as it will cut travel time from four hours to less than two hours. We'll bring about a faster and more efficient um, uh, access for uh, people, uh, faster and more efficient uh, routes for goods and services. So um, people uh, back and forth travel time, uh, back and forth uh, access between the regions will be greatly improved. Currently, one-tenth of railways in the Philippines are operational due to the lack of investment. This causes major traffic congestion in the Manila metropolitan area, which also leads to economic losses as well. According to data released by the Philippines government, road congestion in the region resulted in 24.8 billion U.S. dollars of losses in 2016. To expand the transport infrastructure, the Department of Transportation and ADB aims to complete the railway by 2029. This project will bring environmental benefits like cutting carbon emissions as one railway compartment is expected to replace 1,100 cars. The Asian Development Bank has invested $7 billion into the project, making it the biggest infrastructure project that the bank has ever taken part in. South Korea's construction businesses are also participating in the project, with construction orders for Hyundai and POSCO Engineering and Construction both totaling over $712 million. Since the Build, Build, Build policy from the Duterte administration, the Philippines is conducting large-scale infrastructure developments. Korea's corporations have lots of experience based on decades of overseas construction projects, which is why we have decided to use our ability to contribute to the railway project. In fact, the project is creating more jobs with more than 2,000 Filipinos employed by POSCO for the construction. This aligns with the government's plan to boost the economy through infrastructure investment, as well as ADB's goal to support social and economic development in Asia-Pacific nations. So, Lehyun, you mentioned the heavy traffic in Manila. Did you also experience it? Well, the road traffic congestion was more severe than I had expected. It took me about two hours from the center of the Manila to the International Airport, which is a distance of around 10 kilometers. And so I could really feel how necessary the railway project is. The Philippines government expects one million commuters a day to take the railway. People living in that area will have much better access to jobs thanks to the convenience of the new transportation system, which may also reduce poverty as well. And I saw in your report some South Korean firms joining the project. Tell us more. You're right. It's quite fascinating how South Korea, once the country receiving financial support, is now playing a key role in providing the support to low-income developing member countries. Now, Songdo District in Incheon City, where ADB's annual meeting is currently taking place close to the Gyeonggin Expressway and Port of Incheon, which were both built using ADB's financial support. And now, not only with these infrastructure projects, but Seoul is also taking part in building resilience in developing Asian economies by promoting access to climate technology, improving access to digital services, and enhancing sustainable and inclusive infrastructure development through public-private partnerships. All right, Lehan, we appreciate your report. Thank you.